it's been electric vehicles galore for me but this one i get to keep for a bit Wait, they do? They have a crazy... What was your deal? The, the lease deal was like 400 a month with uh, with like a, a thousand down. Thousand down, $400 a month? Four years. What was the interest rate? Mm, I think it was, I think it was 0 0.99. Oh, wow. That's a pretty good deal. Spend a week with a VinFast VF8 and let me be clear about something, VinFast allowed us to test their car, to review it, to give them our own feedback based on my experience with the vehicle for the week. So yeah, I mean I decided to live with the VF8 for 7 days. I've read so many things about this car online, people talking about how prices have been really attractive, people giving feedback to the brand to make things better. Look, I figured since a lot of people are into the EV market, why not make a video and let you live with the VF8 through my own experience? So here's my VinFast review as the days went by. My first day with the car. I honestly didn't drive much. I went from the dealer to the office then to my apartment. I decided to take some night shots of it because the blue does look pretty freaking sick. And I also saw another VinFast on the road as I was driving around. Look. Truthfully, Monday night was when I started keeping track of my battery and the kilometers I had on it. Tuesday, we took it for a spin to showcase the outside. Right now, we're just getting ready to shoot some sequences for the car. Um, one thing I've realized is that right now, all the doors are pretty much open and the hatch is open. And the car, well, it doesn't turn off, right? Like, I can't turn it off. It just stays like this. But I wonder for how long it'll stay like this. Like, the AC is running right now. It's super nice. I'm just wondering, because this feels weird. It feels like I'm wasting gas or it feels like I'm polluting because the car is on, but I'm not really the car is sure it's on ac is working and everything's good but i'm not polluting i don't know it's kind of on i'm just not used to it i wanted to basically feel what it's like to live with a crossover suv this is 187 inches long very comparable to the model y a little bit bigger than something like the rav4 the shape is nothing special it really is your regular crossover suv I do like how they kept their headlights matching that V logo in the front. The same thing goes for the rear light bar which makes that V shape to match once again their logo. I think the nicest angle this car has to offer is the rear three quarters. Every time I park this and look back for an EV, I liked what I saw. It's really nice. I personally like the design of the end of the tail light. It's got 20 inch aluminum wheels. They are designed for better aero by the way. The charging port rests on the front of the driver's side and I do like seeing that it has a powered tailgate. Although keyless entry is not a thing. It's probably my biggest pet peeve living with it. Mainly because the way this works is that when you approach the driver's door, you need to push on this little black button to unlock the car. It unlocks all the doors, however, only the driver's side has a black button. Aside from that, exterior wise, I like how the mirrors fold in. The chrome on this car gives it that little elevated look. I've realized that the sensors and cameras are really not too noticeable, and the hidden back wiper is actually clever. As for little quirks on the outside, there aren't too many. For the days I've had this, I'd say the door handles could be sturdier and the fitment of the hood could be better. Otherwise, great car from the outside. When you get in the car, by the way, you'll realize there is no push to start. In fact, the brake acts as a push to start. The first time I got in it, it really confused me, but this car is so simple to start and I like that. All you need to do is get in with a key in pocket and put your foot on the brake. That's it easy and efficient. If you want to start driving, seatbelt is literally a must and pressing D will put you on drive. 
the overall feel in this car, okay, when you get inside of this car, what I do like is that it genuinely feels spacious. I love that. The other thing I love is that things are mechanical. Uh, for an EV vehicle, I love the fact that windows are mechanical, the lever to open the door, that's mechanical, the air vents, those are mechanical. I love that stuff, I really do. Now the seats are a bit too stiff for my liking. Jan, on the other hand, he actually finds them decent. He likes them. They are also mechanical, sort of. Not, not entirely, but they have buttons right here. And what I mean about that is that some EV vehicles, they have everything on screen, like including the seats adjustments and, and all that, which is cool, it's nice, but it can be a bit distracting and if things break or the screen freezes and it's not working, you just wanna be able to adjust your seat easy, quick no issues on top of that the seats are actually heated and they offer cooling seats all across the car like the whole car has that back seats front seats i absolutely love that the dashboard is made in vegan leather the car also has a wireless charger the steering wheel has proper controls all the controls you really basically need i also love this massive screen and most importantly what i really like is that the car sits the driver in a proper driving sitting position. That's nice. And up to now, for the small amount of days I've had this, the infotainment, the infotainment works really well. Now, a lot of people complain about this system in the 2023 model and early pre-production 2024 models, but they made so many changes to the release of the 2024 that it seems like those issues have been addressed. However, it's been glitchy from time to time. On this panel, I found input lag to be non-existent though. The UX makes sense and the UI is quite nice, I find. Towards the left, there is a whole vertical menu. This controls a lot of the basics within the car, lights, mirrors, and steering wheel adjustments, heads up display information if you want, and even the sunroof. The sunroof is something only the Plus model offers. But no matter where you are within this menu, you'll realize that inputs are instant and the UX and UI truly just makes sense. What I'm trying to get at is that I don't feel lost while navigating the menu. If you need to charge your car, you can unlock the charging port here. But you then need to head outside and open it physically. Different from the trunk, which you can actually unlatch from the inside. If you swipe the screen from side to side, it'll display a seat belt map and a second swipe, some tire pressure and temperature data. The same menu comes with a few other markers like headlights information, turn signals, the gear you're in and whatnot. On the right is where the magic mainly happens for me, mainly because you can either rock Apple CarPlay or Android Auto wirelessly. Thank you for that. But aside from that, this display either displays some menus or acts as a home screen for built-in GPS, weather, and apps. The lower menu practically mostly controls your climate. Shout out to VinFast for putting proper sliders to control climate. I like that. Of course, this has its own dedicated menu that takes over the whole screen. But there are a few toggle buttons aside from climate that allows for quick controls. Things like pet mode to keep your pet safe inside the car, valet mode which limits some functions of the car, there's also display brightness and even things like ambient light brightness if you need to tweak that. Drive mode is another menu that allows you to have fun like active sport mode. This thing, uh, this thing hauls but I'll talk about that later. And then you've got your cameras, delivering a bunch of angles to ensure you park properly, which at night they work well and they display visuals totally fine. The last toggle button unrelated to climate is the apps library, where all your apps and some preloaded apps will be installed. Oh, and I probably should have mentioned this because I don't find it very intuitive, but if you want to go home from any sort of side menu here, you can just click there and it goes on. Just taking pictures for the car. It's funny because Jan was literally like, can you advance a tiny little bit so we can have the V upright? And so I pressed on D and then the seat belt just wouldn't let me advance. So I wish, you know, the seat belt would not be an issue. Like without the seat belt, you can just move an extra few inches or, or centimeters. But it's all about safety with this car. It is what it is. Also that day I realized how hidden the e-brake was. Not a big deal. I just wasn't expecting for it to be there. Eventually, by the way, I did have small issues with Apple CarPlay, which didn't want to connect at all. 
Tuesday, I basically drove the car for a total of 71 kilometers, mostly gunning it in sport mode. Wednesday, I realized how damn accurate the sensors are. They are a lot more accurate than my RS6 I find. The trigger warning lights make so much more sense and I find you can get closer to objects without an issue. One thing I will say, those sensors are mad accurate. They really are. Anyways, look, Wednesday, I spent the day giving my first driving impressions and diving a bit into the rest of the car. Morning, guys. Today is Wednesday, technically the second day with the car. City driving with this car, I've realized that it is a nice drive. It gets you from point A to B safely, which is, I think, their main thing. Like in Vietnam, it seems like from what I've been reading, they like safety features and they like to have some of this tech to help them with their drive. And that's what this car does really, really well. And it does sit you in a really nice, comfortable position in terms of the driving experience. Now I will say suspension, uh, VinFast, you guys could work a bit more on that. Uh, it's a bit funky in my opinion. Steering, it could be more precise. But for a car, like if I was to compare this to my old Toyota Yaris, it's fine. Like it's totally fine. And it's just an easy car to drive. It doesn't feel as big in a straight line as I thought, but when you start turning, it feels heavy. It really does feel heavy. So that I will say. Other than that, um, there's this weird delay on the pedal uh, that I've realized. But if you come from a regular car, so not an EV, you will not really feel it in a way but if you've driven other evs you'll feel like there's no instant torque so uh, be aware of that but like i said the city driving the casual driving it's it's a nice vehicle that will get you from point a to point b very well and honestly i'm not quite sure how to help you with that i didn't like that i don't know how i triggered that like i was saying honestly i would love for some small little tweaks inside center console feels stable feels solid the steering wheel feels solid the leather dashboard feels solid this whole thing feels solid but the handles you guys could it's a bit too plasticky for my liking like every time i these doors are heavy, by the way, They're very heavy. So every time I close the door, like these handles are, don't, don't feel strong enough. Other than that, um, in terms of interior for now, I'm pretty happy. You guys could probably work on, on this little compartment on the left. It's kind of clunky. Um, that's it. Oh, and guys, keyless entry, please make that a thing. If I want to have access to the passenger seat, I really need to physically grab the key and unlock the car. Now, let me talk a bit about storage and the space this car offers because it's nice. To explore the front, you gotta pull twice on the lever next to the driver's seat and it will open it. Anyways, the layout of the hood is a bit different from some EVs. It is spacious enough to say put some small groceries or objects you don't want roaming around in the trunk, but I will admit it's got some non-standard compartments, however it can really come in clutch. In here you will find your windshield washer fluid, access to the battery, your fuse box, the brake fluid, it's honestly a very simple frunk. My only feedback when it comes to the exterior, again, really is to make this gap look a bit more attractive. The rear seating, very spacious. I'm 5'7", as you can see, and I've got a lot of room. Most people here will get these in lean room, leg room, and head room. Not the best foot room, though. But you've got rear seat climate vents. They've paired up with a couple of USB-A ports and a single USB-C port charging at 90 watts. Love to see that. By the way, for parents, I just realized that's how you enable child lock support. Whatever you decide to connect to the ports, you can let it chill on the center armrest, an armrest built with cup holders. There's no such things as too many cup holders in a car, guys. And if you like to extend your cargo situation, you can put both seats down. For most use cases, the trunk should be plenty big, especially when the seats are down. Let's say it's spacious enough to transport IKEA furniture. When the seats are up, this is how much space you get. You can comfortably fit about six carry-ons in here, I'd say. Underneath though, there is no storage at all, but you do get a power outlet and a hidden air pump. Two things I've realized today with the car. The AC kicks in super quick, but the heater, not so much. The second thing, this thing, Hauls. Holy does it pull. Um, I'm going to drive mode and I put this in sport. Oh, Jesus Christ. And it keeps going, which is absolutely crazy. Like the car just wants to go. Keeps 
going on the highway you're gonna enjoy that passing people you're gonna enjoy that but again you're gonna feel that small delay in the pedal it's really fast for an SUV within drive mode okay there's something that they call creep mode creep mode is basically it just lets the vehicle advance slowly if I turn that off it just stays however if you are on a hill or something like that the car will move backwards like a manual car which is a bit weird and regenerative braking is very very noticeable on high I'm currently on high if you put it on medium you'll feel the difference low you'll feel the difference and off the car just literally glides I haven't driven the car in eco mode in sport I would love to drive it all the time in sport but again it consumes quite a bit of mileage and the battery does dissipate faster look if you ever have time book a test drive put it in sport mode and you're probably gonna kill your salesman because this thing really pulls driving performance for about 15 kilometers shaved like three percent Get home in fashion. Look at this. I can't make this up. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> this doesn't feel like a zero to 60 in five second car. Absolutely not. This car makes you feel like you can literally go anywhere. Right past people. Boom, 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 boom. What I love about EV vehicles, they really do feel like little go-karts. You go around people and stuff. It's actually nice. As I've gotten the car, I've only done a mix of normal and sport driving, but I'm sure you guys are interested in the eco mode. So what we're gonna do today is that we're gonna drive in eco mode the whole day. So I'm still at my place. This morning, it's uh, 7 a.m., 44% at 2,421 kilometers. So we're gonna put the car in eco mode and we are literally going to be driving like this the whole day. And I don't like the touch because then like, let's say you put the full flicker right now, full touch up, then you gotta cancel it with a single touch. And sometimes it just, it doesn't work properly. I, I'm not a fan. It's always been the same with BMWs. I think that's why they changed it. Um, been fast. I guess proper flickers would be cool. Click, does three. Full, does the full flicker. The one usually cancels it. So the eco mode. I drove like this until I dissipated my battery. Everywhere I went, I put this car in eco mode. From that original 2,421 kilometers at 44% on Thursday, I was able to get 110 kilometers more and using about 36% of what I had left. Eco mode is really, really good and it's what can get you the furthest and closest to their full autonomy number. Now this here has two electric motors, one in the front and the other one in the rear, which means that all wheel drive is offered in all versions. The Eco delivering 349 horsepower and the Plus delivering 402 horsepower with estimated ranges between 390 kilometers and 425 kilometers with proper driving. I put about 300 kilometers from Monday when I picked up the car to Monday when I dropped it off, which included a mix of sports mode, normal mode and eco mode. I really did spend all this time with the VinFast and luckily between some eco driving and sport driving, a single charge lasted from Monday to Sunday with a total of 238 kilometers. One thing I've realized is that if you leave your car and someone's calling and you pick up the phone outside, the call will be in here. By the way, the distance to lock the car really isn't the biggest one. Let me show you. Après la garderie. 
you see la droite. Today is Saturday. I let my father-in-law drive the car. And he literally had the same opinions as me. Tomorrow, tomorrow, I'm definitely giving my final thoughts of my driving experience with a car. Final driving thoughts. Today being Sunday, not many of my driving thoughts have changed, but I've experienced different things. One of those being the fact that lane assist can be a bit too aggressive for my liking. Sometimes when I'm getting off the highway, uh, the lane sort of like, you know, they like sort of split and it becomes this one lane. The car gets a bit confused and it starts throwing you side to side. I, I'm, I'm not sure I like that, but it is a feature you can turn off. I know for a fact that VinFast is working on an update to make sure that lane assist works properly. To be honest, I think in terms of drivability, that is my only major, major complaint. And even though lane assist is not the best adaptive cruise control is actually pretty good like the, the car does follow lanes fairly well as i'm getting on the highway right now if i was to you know activate it take off my hands off we're going into a small little curve right here the car just does it by itself it's actually really good i'm not quite sure why lane assist is not as good as this this i feel comfortable just letting it roll here comes another quite major curve. The car just does it, man. It's so cool. It literally just does it. And it's keeping a very healthy distance between the car in front. It's just doing it. There's no aggressive movements, no jitter, no nothing. It does it very smooth. I like it. As traffic is approaching, the car is decelerating. I see red lights everywhere. Very nice job. Brake, 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 brake. Oh, it's braking. Oh yeah, this is really nice. This is good. This is really, really good. We are at 2,532 kilometers, 7%. By the way the battery has been dissipating, I genuinely feel that I could go an extra 20 kilometers in eco mode. So this whole time, okay, ever since I touched 63%, if I remember well, I've been driving in eco mode. And I've realized that in eco mode, this car definitely delivers a lot more kilometers because sports mode is just not it for kilometers. So yeah, that was my week with the most recent release of the 2024 VF8 VinFast. Look, by no means is this a perfect car. It's got its own little quirks, although it does a lot of stuff right like you guys saw. But what I like the most is that the company seems to listen and takes criticism really well. I know the 2024 version has major improvements from their last iteration. On my end, aside from the handle, the interior does feel solid. The car overall feels roomy. Road noise was average, I consider that a plus. The power sunroof is nice and having a physical power shade is nicer. Aside from the suspension not being the best, I didn't notice any right quality issues. I also never felt motion sick or felt like the car was throwing me a bit everywhere in my seat. Knowing that this has an unlimited mileage battery warranty for 10 years makes me feel even better. Also, VinFast seems to be addressing a lot of software issues they've had in the past, but one that I think should be awesome to fix right away is Apple CarPlay disconnecting sometimes. There were a couple of nights where the phone would just keep disconnecting randomly. With an update, I think getting rid of the delay the accelerator delivers would be awesome. I also think that lane assist is a bit too aggressive when correcting you. The seat belts. I only wish the car would let me drive without them, mainly because I experienced a few times where I simply wanted to move the car by a few inches or centimeters and it just wouldn't let me. The frame rates on the cameras, those definitely need to be adjusted. It's a bit laggy and I feel like frames skip. Proper flickers also would be nice. Keyless entry would be darn nice. Another one to put high up there in the list. It's a bit funny how keyless entry works properly for the trunk, but not the rest of the car. And then making the warning signs a bit more intuitive to pull up. It took a few tries playing with the screen, but I finally figured out how to pull those warnings on the screen. Realistically, it takes about 30 minutes to get a 50% battery charge. And that should technically give you about 223 kilometers. Which I then paid $18 for. 
So this was it for me. This has been my seven day experience with a car. I'm returning it today. I know it takes longer to really know a car inside out. I understand that. And I think the best way to know a car to the fullest is putting it through winters. I think winters really show the real characteristics of a car and how it'll potentially age in the upcoming years. That being said, if you've driven one, if you own one, if you have been in one, please let me know down below. Let us know down below. Leave your comments, your thoughts, opinions, feedback on the car. It helps the brand and it helps those who want to potentially own one. Thanks again to VinFast for letting us borrow the car. Much appreciated. I'll leave you all with this. Take care and I'll see you guys soon. Mm.